Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA Network Plus certification training course, the online training course that's addicted to chocolate. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk all about network scanners. The N10-004 exam, section 5.2, says that we need to explain the purpose of network scanners. And there's four types listed, packet sniffers, intrusion detection software, intrusion prevention software, and finally, port scanners. So we're going to step through what each one of those things can do for our network. Let's start our conversation of our network scanners with, with something called packet analyzers. And you'll notice I use the term analyzers here. The CompTIA certification requirements is packet sniffers. But the term sniffer is actually a registered trademark. So to stay on the right side of the trademark laws here in the United States, you'll hear me describe these as packet analyzers. If you're interested in a sniffer, that's referring to a specific product name owned by a company. We're using that term a little bit more generically these days, but it still doesn't mean that the trademark is not registered. It certainly is. So the generic name of this would be more like packet analyzers. And the idea is that these analyzers would sit on the network and they gather packets for us. They collect all the packets together and they present them to us on the screen in a form that we can understand as human beings. If we were just watching all of the ones and zeros go by, it wouldn't make any sense. So these packet analyzers are actually very informational, very intelligent about what they provide. There are many options for packet analyzers out there. There are open source options. There are commercial options available. All of them have advantages and disadvantages with them. In the open source market, Wireshark is certainly one of the most common that you'll run into. It's also, regardless of the packet analyzer you have, Wireshark or otherwise, it is an incredibly powerful tool. If you want to be able to see everything going across your network and understand from top to bottom exactly what's going on, a packet analyzer will tell you exactly what's going on. The packets themselves do not lie. You are never going to be in a situation where you're not quite sure or you're making guesses when you are looking at the packets because they will tell you exactly what's going on on the network and there's no refuting what's inside of those packets. Here's an example of a packet analyzer. This is Wireshark and you can see it's got a lot of capabilities. There's a lot of things happening on the screen. Uh, I've already captured some traffic going to and from my machine. This is my machine talking out to Google Mail. And you can see packet by packet, you have three panes that are here. The top pane here tells us a packet by packet summary of what's going on. The pane just underneath that is one that shows us more detail about what's inside the packet. And you can even expand out and look at more information. If you wanted to know things like what is the time to live set for on this particular frame, you can go down to that level. Or if you're somebody that just wants to see a hexadecimal breakout of exactly what this packet looked like, that's your bottom pane. There are a lot of other capabilities inside of this. There, there are entire days of classes that could be set aside for really understanding what a good packet analyzer like Wireshark can tell you. Uh, you should just keep in mind that if, if, at the very least, you should be able to plug into the network, use Wireshark, capture some packets, and even if you're not going to be the one who is going to be examining the packet, Packets, at least understand how to capture some data so that you can then send it off to someone else. Because all of this information in here is extremely useful when you're trying to troubleshoot the network and understand more about what's happening with the way that applications are performing. Another type of scanner on our network is something with a little bit more of a security focus. This is an intrusion detection system. There are also intrusion prevention systems. They're very similar in the way they work with a couple of big differences. What we're really focusing in on here are intrusions. These are the ways that the bad guys are using to take control of our machines to gain access to the computer systems that we have in our environments. And they intrude in our systems by taking advantage of exploits in our operating system, exploits in the applications that we're using. These applications are susceptible to things like buffer overflows, cross-site scripting, uh, database injections, a lot of different kinds of ways to get into your computer by doing things that these applications weren't expecting and therefore have no programming around them. And by doing that, they they gain access to your machine. Now, there's a big difference here between intrusion detection and intrusion prevention. Detection just tells you what's happening, gives you an alert, gives you an alarm, at least gives you a heads up that somebody's trying to get into your network and they're trying to take advantage of a buffer overflow vulnerability inside of your operating system. 
Now, it doesn't stop that from happening. It only informs you that that's happening. There is a type of system called the intrusion prevention system that, like its name sounds, is going to stop things. It's going to prevent them from happening. So they will not only identify that it was a buffer overflow vulnerability trying to take advantage of a known problem with your operating system, but it stopped it. And it may also send you a message to saying, someone was trying to do that from this IP address. I stopped it. It didn't get in. It didn't take control of those machines because it's designed to prevent those things from happening. There's a, two different kinds of intrusion-based systems. One's a network-based IPS. And there are many, many different kinds of network-based IPSs out there, both open source and commercial. But if you wanted to load one up on one of your machines and have a look at it, a very common open source type of network-based intrusion prevention system is from a company called snort.org. And this uh, snort.org product is one that you can put on a machine and it will tell you what's going on and stop some of those things from coming through your system. It sits on the network, watching the network packets go by, which is why we call it a network based IPS. There are also host based IPSs. These are extremely common. These are now almost included with every um, high end virus scanning solution that it, they just load on a firewall and an intrusion prevention system along with it. And it runs on a host. So that's why we call it a host based IPS. There's so many options out there available for you. And what's nice about host based IPS is unlike the network based IPS, if it's on the host, it can see the information before it is encrypted and after it is decrypted. So we see it in the clear because it's on our system. The network-based IPSs don't have that functionality because it's encrypted as it goes across the network. So there's some limited visibility we have if we are encrypting packets going across the network. And that's why we use both network-based IPSs and host-based IPSs. There's really a place for both of those in our environments today. Let's say that we wanted to examine our network to find out what devices had open ports, which ones were providing services on our network. We wanted to actively scan devices to see if they have open holes or things that we weren't expecting to see open from other devices. Clearly a security type issue. The port scanners are exactly what can do that. They will query a machine with a TCP port or UDP port and see what kind of response you get back. So we can tell a machine, we can hit thousands of different ports on a machine and see if any of them will, will respond back to us. And if they do, aha, we know that that port must be open. It must be providing services on that port on that machine. A very common port, probably the most popular popular port scanner that's out there today is one called InMap. And it's so popular because it's incredibly powerful. And it also something that is really simple to use from the command line. Here's my Linux desktop again. And, and InMap will run in Linux. It'll run in Windows. It runs in a lot of different operating systems. But I'm just going to do a very basic, simple InMap scan. And I'm going to ping it a, a, or send an InMap scan to a device on my network that should have a web server running on it. So that's one, my 192.168.0.1. So this is a very simple InMap scan. If I hit Enter, it's going to go out. And behind the scenes, it's going to query 1,711 different ports that are out there. So behind the scenes, there were thousands of frames in that very short time frame that were going back and forth to that device. It did find one port open, though. It found one on port 80 via TCP, it found that that is an HTTP port that it found open on that machine. So in just a, a very short period of time, 2.228 seconds, I was able to, to scan that device for over 1,700 different ports and determine what of those 1,700 ports was open and available to me. Now that we've scanned our network so many different ways, let's see what we remember of this. Our first question is, what is the best network tool to use for examining raw packets? We looked at a bunch of packets that were on my machine, and we were using Wireshark to do that. So that must be a network analyzer. Our second question, what kind of security scanner will block security attacks on a host device? And that is our keyword there, host. If we're blocking it and it's on a host machine, it must be a host-based intrusion prevention system. And our last question, what network scanner can find unknown devices and determine what TCP and UDP ports are open? And that is a port scanner. We ran an in-map scan to show you an example of what that might look like. Well, that concludes our module on network scanners. We've gone through our network analyzers. We've looked at intrusion prevention software. We've even looked at doing a 
port scan to a device. If you'd like to look through our library of all of our Network Plus videos, participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website, freenetworkplus.com.